Hello everybody, welcome to another Arkham Horror Investigator Guide for new players. Today we're going to be talking about Marie Lambeau, the Entertainer. Uh, this deck is built with uh, two copies of the core set and uh, the entire Circle Undone uh, cycle of cards. If you only have one copy of the core set, we recommend picking up two or proxying the cards you don't have. Uh, it'll allow your deck to be more consistent and will help you win more and winning more is good. Uh, last but not least, you might have heard as a new player something called the Taboo List. Uh, we recommend ignoring the Taboo List for your first few runs of the game and just playing with these cards as printed and really like digging into them. The only card that I see is one that's very powerful on this list and has a very specific purpose in this deck. Uh, but we'll get to that. Travis, why don't you talk about Marie Lambeau? Uh, so Marie Lambeau is a character that they printed for the Doom archetype in purple, which you kind of get to play with if you're playing with just this cycle, but if you get more cards, it opens up a lot more. As it is, you're mostly just playing a, a generic mystic with a handful of other cards kind of tossed in there. Um, four brains, mm. four books. Is actually like a little bit awkward of a stat line, considering that they printed six cents in this cycle, which makes your... Uh, we'll get to a layer, but basically you get to investigate with your brain. and Because it doesn't change much for you, as a general rule. Um, one punch is actually a great thing to see because you want a dump stat so your other ones are as good as they can be. And three foot is pretty serviceable, pretty solid for just avoiding treacheries and whatnot. It's not uh, not going to be passing many tests on your own, but you've got a reasonable chance and it's easy to boost up for the ones you actually care about. Heck yeah. Her ability is, well, you have one or more Doom among cards you control. The cards you control are assets that you have in play like or your Marie Lambeau investigator card itself you can you get one free action to return to either play a spell or use the action ability on a spell and then her star effect is you can add one doom or remove one doom from a card you control which do not rely on this to trigger <laughs> your ability it yeah. will not end well um we should talk a bit about the idea of putting dooms, Doom on things is probably a little bit intimidating for new players. So while Marie Lambeau, she's a mystic and like mystics are generally like pretty good because you really only have to focus on one stat. To really take full advantage of her, you are going to have to like explore an area of the game that might be a bit daunting to new players. So if this is like your first investigator, um, maybe not Marie Lambeau right off the bat. She's just she can be a bit intimidating to take full advantage of, but yeah, it's a little spooky. We're gonna hold your hand as best we can through it. Oh, for sure. Uh, so, mystifying Stong, I'll let Travis talk about Baron because him and Baron are very, very acquainted. We're friends. Uh, but mystifying Song commits for two wilds, but what it also does is kind of like a reverse ancient evils. At any point, the agenda threshold would advance. You can just say no, not this turn. Uh, it does remove the song from the game, so you only get to do it once. But man, does it feel juicy when you're able to. And in a pinch, uh, it can commit for two wild. Uh, it does cost three as well, so it is a bit pricey. The effect is strong, and like the price associated with that is high. Uh, and especially in a color like purple, where it's harder to get resources to sit on this, because you're always wanting to be like playing your expensive spells. Uh, it's something that... like. It's great when it goes off, but at the same time, don't like, I wouldn't say like don't tunnel vision on it. Sometimes just two in a stat is two in a stat. Yeah, like it is a very powerful card, but like don't, you don't have to play it. And don't worry about like trying to use it as a key moment. You just, just kind of, if you have it, I would say just throw it out when you can. Yeah, yeah. If if you have a moment where the agenda would advance and you have three resources and Mystifying Song in your hand, unless you need to play something next turn, like you need it to like win, just be like, here, we'll take an extra turn. Yep, and you can generally be, uh, you're fairly calm. You're going to see this pretty well every game because it is a spell and you can dig it up with your Arcane Initiates. As well as Mr. Rook. All right, what about Baron? So Baron, he takes an ally slot. So even if you have an ally, they're gonna explode. Uh, if you don't have a charisma, he can't leave play, 
with less than 3 Doom on him. And when any amount of damage is placed on him, or placed on a Vesker at your location, they take additional damage. As action, you can exhaust him to put a Doom on him. Uh, and then if he has 3 or more Doom on him, you discard him. So, <clears throat> Baron Samdi is a card that you control. And he puts Doom on himself. So, he's technically a weakness. And don't get me wrong, taking the extra damage every time you do really sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but he is worth an action to you every turn. Yes. And he is, especially with some of the other cards in your deck that we're going to get to, he is very easy to find him. Mm -hmm. Finding Picking him up is very reliable. Yeah. It's so, uh... And there's going to be, like, some scenarios, like, uh, if you have the last king from Carcosa, where you're just like, all right, Baron, you and I are best friends for the remainder of the scenario. Uh, luckily, moments like that are few and far between. You can get rid of him. You just have to play. This is kind of one of the things where you have to, like, know kind of, like, the flow of the game to be, like, gauge the time to make sure that you're able to uh, place the Doom on him to get through. However, you're probably going to be the only player doing this archetype, so you're the one who's going to control the Doom that's not, like, outside of the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's start talking about his deck. Anything we want to say here? Some This is kind of like Shriveling is just a way to kill people. These are from the core sets. Rosary gives you a bit more brain. In addition, it gives you a bit more horror damage, which is also a brain. Uh, it's also the only thing in the necklace slot for the deck, so that's a pretty easy include. Yeah, Holy Rosary is just like the purple card that goes there. Yeah. Arcane Initiate? Gets Doom on it. Gets Eight. Doom on it, so it allows you to... Uh... It gets Doom on it, uh, which allows you to use your extra actions, and it's also very easy to kill. And sometimes Baron shows up and does it for you. Yep. One thing you need to be aware about with this deck when we're looking at... Uh... So Arcane Initiate lets you kind of get your setup. You have three spells in your deck that you play onto the board and a handful of other spells that are you want to see just like as often as you can um arcane is just gonna hit like pretty well every time you use it with your what is that six nine nine or yeah nine spells you've got so you got mystifying song two word protections two shrivelings two six senses two withers um shriveling you're gonna want to try and save your charges for bigger enemies and let your wither pick up the slack Again, the, the arcane is shit, along with Mr. Rook, gives this deck a lot of consistency in finding the pieces that it needs to cast it up. Yeah. Uh, Drawn to the Flame is just an, a nice way to grab two clues for a minimal uh, challenge. Uh, as a purple character and your brain being high, you're usually pretty good for the um, Mythos deck, but you also don't want to just like throw it down and be like, I got this no matter what. There is a little bit of risk, but the two clues are really nice. Yeah. Uh, emergency yeah. cash helps you get uh, money for your mystifying song in addition to the expensive spells that you're going to need to be playing uh, lucky is just always nice to have someone in one of our comments said the feeling of playing the game with a lucky in your hand versus without is like it's a big difference and just <laughs> it's nice to have uh, Water protection is a spell, so you can find it with the Arcane Initiate, and if you have Water protections, the game can, like, you can really control the flow of the game, especially in a scenario with Ancient Evils that might be rushing you to a point you don't want to be with your, uh, Doom playstyle. Uh, and then we got Fearless, which just, uh, gives you some guts, and, uh, will give you some brain, uh, and then, uh, helps you heal horror if you pass successfully, which you probably will with your brain tests. Yeah, I noticed this deck doesn't actually have guts in it. Which is a not very common thing to come up. It was up. a bit of an oddity. Yeah. Uh, I think I put Fearless into this deck to offset. There's like a lot of brain damage you're going to be dealing to yourself with the mm -hmm. word protections and shriveling. Yeah, I think, I think that makes sense. It's like... just uh, also like this campaign. Presumably, if you're playing Marie Lambeau with Circle Undone cards only, you're probably playing the Circle Undone, and that or that campaign does a fair bit of brain damage to you. So it does. Uh, last thing from the core set in these cards is Unexpected Courage, which is uh, like a guts or any other thing you need it to be. Yep, it's nice for pushing your punch up to like a reasonable one uh, score. Your foot becomes five, which is actually good. Yeah. And then makes your brain or your book six, which is great. Heck yeah. All right, let's get to the cards, uh, the level zero cards in this deck from 
the Circle Undone cycle. Starting with Sign Magic, which gives you uh, an extra slot for an arcane slot for a spell or ritual asset. Um, so as Travis was saying, there's three spells you want out. Shriveling for dealing with big things, Six Sense to make sure you're getting clues, and Wither to deal with the small things, uh, which without Sign Magic is one more arcane slot than you have. So Sign Magic allows you to do that. And the hand slot has like no competition. So it's an easy choice here. Let's see. Uh, six Sense and Wither. These are just, like, Six Sense especially is a very strong card, a very strong spell to get clues as a Mystic. And it's uh, both this and Wither don't have a negative effect. They have a positive effect if one of those symbols are revealed. Uh, with Six Sense, you can actually end up doing a lot of really cool things with it as well. Uh, Wither itself is just a, uh, it's a, it's, it's, a less efficient way of attacking, but it makes it so you don't have to spend charges, so you can kill small things or like things that have two hit points if you have the time for it, without having to spend something from your um, your shriveling. So it's just a, a way to attack without spending your big resources. And Travis, I'll let you talk about Mr. Rook. Okay. Mr. Rook is an ally, which is a very competitive slot in this deck, but he's worth it. Um, Arcane Initiate wouldn't make the cut having access to Mr. Rook if it didn't put a Doom on itself, so it was situationally better. But Mr. Rook is really, like, is really good. <laughs> uh, you only get three uses of him, but you get to search the top nine cards of your deck, so let's be real, you're not a baby. And you get to take any card you want. If you find a weakness in those nine cards, you also have to take that card. But that's okay. Um, sometimes that will just translate into an extra action because you found Baron Samdi. Mm -hmm. um, or you'll be able to pick out whatever basic weakness that you got in a time when it is more convenient for you to deal with yep. than having it sprung on you. Also, you just you still get the card you want. You just have to draw the weakness in addition. Um yeah, he just really, he takes some damage for you, lets you pull out any niche card that you need. You're missing, you're missing your shriveling, go pull up one of those, you know, your holy rosary you had to get discarded because you took too much brain damage, go find another one. Like, he just, if, he's really good. Yeah. <laughs> and he lets you, like, find, like, if you need to find your weakness and you want to get it out of the, the situation, like, if it's a time, good time to draw it, it allows you to do it. And then sometimes on your last search, he also finds Baron Samdi. So he's going to just kill Mr. Rook. You, you lose the, the health and the horror that he could take, but like now you're not drawing him in the future, right? So like he's out of your deck and he's now, as Travis said, extra actions. And also just like no dead draw where he shows up later. And that's good. Yeah, so. if, if you want more in-depth talk about Mr. Rook, you can check out some of our other more recent videos. Mm -hmm. Uh but it's a good card. You should play. Good. Uh, deny existence is another great way to say no to the game. It's just... You just get to say no to taking damage, horror, losing cards from your hand, losing resources, actions, and you just just get to say no. It's great. <laughs> Travis, why don't you talk about, a bit about Ghastly Revelation? Nah, Bryn's going to talk about this one. This one's more of his, uh, more of his alley. What are you saying? I die all the time? <laughs> no. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> wouldn't it's not that. accurate, though. <laughs> all right, so, Ghastly Revelation, zero cost, discover three clues, then die. <laughs> but... Yeah, all right, I, I'll, give you, I'll give you that. It doesn't seem very good. But when you die, you get to give your clues away to someone else, and, like, maybe you're dying already. Or, alternative here, you've got too much Doom on your cards in play, and you need to remove it from the game. You can use Ghastly Revelation to not only give your team a bump <clears throat> towards closing the game out, but also to remove all the Doom on your cards from the game. Because mm -hmm. they, all leave, they all leave with you. And lastly, the mental drama? Eh, it's not that huge of a deal. Like, you don't want to be firing this off 
every scenario every, every game yeah like you don't really want to do that you're here to play the game not be dead but like sometimes you don't have a better choice yeah most of the time it's a perception but like when it's not it's yeah. really clutch yeah when when it's not it can be it can be very impactful yeah because there's there's scenarios where it's like you cannot advance while this like you cannot win if this location has clues and it's the last turn and you guys don't have enough actions you can be like bye yeah yeah yeah, yeah. investigate twice fire off ghastly revelation it's almost like taking two turns yeah. sure you take a mental trauma for it but whatever yeah i mean we have the fearless to at least kind of like get yeah. rid of a little bit of that mm -hmm. uh prophecy uh, there's going to be doom in play, so it's very likely that this will commit for two, if not three wild every time, and three wild is really good. Two wild is very good. Yeah, as as a general, this is at worst a uh, unexpected courage. Yeah, and it's usually more. Yeah, dude, why is four of cups twice here? <laughs> Good oh, question, it's, Justin. It's who made good. the slides? I made these slides like two months ago. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I did. Uh, you know, I'm going to quickly see if I can just like pull this open to make sure I didn't. Oh, no, I can't because the deck's private. Okay. Uh, let's just assume I didn't miss a card and just put four of cups there twice for some reason. Cool. Uh, okay. Travis, why don't you take these ones? Okay. Uh, Book Shadows, this is your alternative to Sign Magic. It does a very similar thing, except it costs you an action to play, and you have to pay an extra resource for it, but it gives you an additional arcane slot to hold all your stuff, and gives you the opportunity to recharge your shriveling if you're like the main monster killer or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, next up, we got Four of Cups, and Four of Cups, you can only have one tarot card and play it once, but uh, this is a very good one to have because it makes your brain five, and it's free sometimes. It's boring, but it's good. In our conversation, Last... did we say this was what, what? What did we say was our like our, the, what we thought was the strongest chalice? I think the I think the strongest one is the Ace of Swords, but this one's also very good. Yeah, like on one hand, Four of Cups is like I get some contention for being the best because on one hand, Mystics use their brain for everything. Yeah, but on the other hand, like you can already get cheap brain boosts. It's much yeah. more difficult to get like gener generic punch boosts because yeah, yeah. you can get. Like, the sort of basic card for getting a punch boost is B-Cop, and he costs four in an ally slot. Whereas the base card for getting a brain Holy boost Rosary. is Holy Rosary, which yeah. only costs two. So. That's fair. Uh, then we got Diana. Yeah, she's not boring, but she's also very, very good. So when you play her as a lightning bolt, you can stick <clears throat> an, a spell. Yeah, a non-weakness spell. From her hand on her, and then you can have her take a damage to play that spell. Yes, as if it was in your hand. Yeah, which is like pretty sick with water protection and deny existence. Oh, baby, just having th like three water protections from a single card. Like, what can the game? What will the game do to you? Right. Dang. She's strong. Uh, I'm trying to look up right now. I'm. Can you? Can you put mystifying song on her? Touch I mean, you can put it on her, but can you use it more than once? Uh, as if if it is not placed in your discard pile after the play, it remains attached. That yeah, look that up because I actually have it here. So, it's it removes it from the game. So like. It might go away. Oh, you know, they're saying that Mistifying Song gets removed because it just removes it as part of the effect. Mm. But, like, for the Painted World, it wouldn't because the Painted World the painted only world gets removed is when it's discarded. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Like, we're not saying that, like, you need... It's, it's bad now that you can't do Mystifying Song. Like, Water Protection to Deny Existence is like Chef's Kiss on that. Uh, just like, yeah, there's a lot of uh, treacheries and stuff that make you discard cards from your hand, and then <clears> if you don't want to have to pay the resources for Mystifying Song, you can just slap on Dayana and have her think, hold on to it for a bit. Yeah, I yeah. think you still have to pay for it. Really? Yeah, you may play it in your hand. 
Yeah. Not checks like, out. Attached, just only playing yeah. cards that cost one or zero. Yeah. I do think yeah, like it simply may be played as if it were in your hand. Like okay. if you can get so we'll talk briefly like about level five to nine existence. It's like level zero, but whatever <laughs> the game would do, you get the opposite. So if you take damage, you heal damage. Take horror, you heal horror. Horror. Discard cards, draw cards. If you can get like this on your Diana, like that's like, oh baby. That sh like you should win the game off yeah that. yeah like that that should just be like a game winner three deny existence it costs zero so you can always trigger it no matter what not that that mm -hmm. matters though as I've, I've talked briefly about like the one cost means you can always play it assuming that like you can gain resources at the end of your turn um yeah but just being able to do the opposite of what the game wants you to three times, like, like getting this on Diana, it's expensive. It's eight experience, and then you only have one copy of Deny Existence in your deck you need to draw. But, like, good God, you'll feel powerful. It's not a problem finding with Mr. Rook. Exactly. Oh, baby, he's so strong. Yeah. Well, Diana is, like, a little bit of a scary pickup with the... Uh... What's his face, Baron Samdi in your deck? Yeah, if, if you're really worried about that and you really want to live the Diana dream, you could just write Charisma on a piece of paper if you don't have done much Legacy and just proxy your uh, the Charisma card if you really want it to go that route. Yeah. Uh, briefly, Six Sense or Wither. Does anyone, what do you guys want to talk about that? Six Sense level four is really, really good. Um, it's, yeah, it's strong enough that I feel like I'm kind of an idiot if I'm not playing it in a purple deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, but, this is the real payoff to yeah. using your brain to investigate as mm -hmm. Mary instead of your book, because sometimes you get two clues. And also you get to investigate at, like, six for some reason as well. Yeah. Any number of times. No and, drawback. And it, it's, it's also what Travis is saying as well, why it's a bit awkward that she has four book and four brain, right? But, I mean, like, you're going to be using your brain for the majority of your stuff anyway, right? It's just, what can you do? Yep. Uh, upgraded Wither is just web, uh, Wither, but a little a bit better. Because now it's, a, it's essentially dealing plus one damage if you reveal a symbol. Essentially yeah. in a weird way. Yeah, it, like, translates into effectively dealing, like, one and just shy of what half damage every attack yeah like, yeah about that it sounds it right it depends it depends what exactly your chaos bag looks like but yeah uh, one one in like a third it's like, two fifths sounds yeah, about right yeah it's mm -hmm. like one it's one in a bit yeah because it's not, not quite, like yeah not it's not like consistent half. like you're not going to be able to trust this to kill a three health minion and a three health enemy in two attacks right but yeah, you might be able yeah, to and, Unless you've got uh, unless you got something else going on that lets you see more tokens. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's Marie. Dude, these videos are so much shorter than the other ones. Because they only have one cycle instead of six. Yeah. Um, or five or whatever it is. Any other thoughts on Marie before we send this video off? Uh, she's very fun. Uh, the Doom thing, like just mentioned at the start, Doom thing is a little bit intimidating, but just uh, just do it. Yeah. Be just, mindful that you're playing yeah. with other people in the game <laughs> yeah yeah always always try to pay attention to what the doom threshold is and how much is in play yeah because you never want to be the guy who's like yeah so i just cost us two turns for no real reason yeah you can't like, just check out while you're playing this yeah. deck yeah, yeah. There's, there's no Gotta zoe samras where you're like are there monsters in play now nah, i'll draw three cards get your turn yeah, like I'll, yeah. I'll do whatever it doesn't matter anymore like, uh, like, here's my advice. Just what I was, this is what I do because like we record and we stream our games. Just when you're doing at the start of the mythos phase, just say the number of doom in play and then say how much are on the agenda. It's very helpful for you, especially if you're playing this deck. Yeah. Really. Uh, the last thing I would say about this is that <laughs> if you don't have the Dunwich legacy, go ahead and pull up Arkham DB and look up a card called uh, what? Right? Is it called Blood Rite? Blood Pact? No, Moonlight Rage. Blood Oh, yeah, no, Blood, Blood Pact. Yeah. Blood Pact, there you go. That's another easy uh, proxable card. Yeah, again, easy easy to proxy because it's a, it's a permanent. It never gets shuffled into your deck. You can literally just write write its name on a piece of paper. And... Yeah. Yeah, it's called Blood Pact. Uh, it's just an easy way to get Doom and make your, make your effects better. Again, you got to be real careful with it, though. 
especially playing with other people, because uh, mm -hmm. you know you can't really get the doom off again. And yeah. then the other one as well, because like, like Marie is kind of like she. Some other tools will get there. If you're also worried about doom, there is also Moonlight Ritual, which removes doom from a card you control. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that one's either Carcosa or Dumb, which I don't remember. Yeah. That one's a yeah. lot of proxy because it goes actually into your deck. Though, mm -hmm. So. Um, also, just because we always talk about proxying, here's my advice for um, proxying cards. Uh, first off, you should be playing with sleeved cards. It just feels better, and your cards won't get damaged. It's great. Number yeah, two, oh yeah, even wanna... if you're just going to go spend $5 on crappy Ultra Pro yeah, sleeves. Yeah, that's what I do. Like, I, I just use the cheapest yeah. Ultra Pro sleeves I can find, yeah. right? Don't get, the, don't get, like, penny sleeves. Yeah. Those don't shuffle very well. Get, like, actual... Go to your local comic shop and tell them that you're building like a magic deck or something and you yeah. want sleeves for it they'll give you some nice solid backed ones yeah like i i can get i, I buy a hundred for four dollars and like they're they're fine and that's fine. what they'll probably give you one um as well somewhere like that like five or six bucks for a hundred um yeah. and then if you want to proxy a card either like you could print off the a picture of it or just write on a card on a piece of paper cut it to the size of the card and put like a magic card or one of your extra Cards you're not using in a sleeve, yeah. and then just slip that in front like a little. Yeah, you'll have to card. you'll have to use one of the cards that you're not using because these cards are not quite standard trading card size. They're mm -hmm. slightly smaller than that, so you'll be able to tell if you put it on like a Pokemon card or a, a Magic card or whatever, what have you, because the card will be slightly different. Really? Yeah, these these cards are like just a little bit smaller. Mm -hmm. Curse you, Fantasy yeah. Flight. But yeah, yeah, that's Marie Lambeau. We have a list of investigators we're going to get to next. Anyone who's wondering when we're going to get to the uh, Innsmouth Conspiracy uh, investigators, because I imagine there are new players who are just starting with Innsmouth Conspiracy because it just came out. Uh, we're going to get to that when the entire cycle is done so we can talk about the everything that's included in that for their cards. Otherwise, we'll be talking about the core set and just a, uh, the deluxe expansion itself. And we've been there with Dunwich Legacy and the options are limited. So we're going to wait till we have a bit more for you for Yeah, that. if you can't find a guide for your Innsmouth Conspiracy Investigators, just enjoy building an Investigator from scratch because you don't get to do it. Yeah. It's a fun experience. You don't have to do it too often. Yeah. Uh, but thanks for watching. We'll see you guys uh, in a week or so for the next Investigator Guide. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.